Welcome to the Worst Sports Channel on YouTube, Hot Garbage Sports with me, Coach Ryan D. The Jason Spezza ruling is in, and he is getting a whopping oh, six games. Six games for Spezza for his knee to the head on Neil Pionk in the gong show game between the Winnipeg Jets and the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm going to give you my thoughts on this. But let's go ahead and let's take a look. The video is a long one. It's four minutes from the Department of Players Safety. Let's go ahead and take a look at that video, and then I'll summarize my thoughts at the end of it. Sunday night in Winnipeg, Maple Leafs forward Jason Spezza delivered a reckless and retaliatory knee to the head of Jets defenseman Neil Pionk, causing an injury. As the video shows, in the third period of a contentious game, the Leafs chip the puck in deep behind the Jets' goal. Spezza picks up the puck and is immediately poke-checked by Pionk, who loses his stick in the process. Spezza carries the puck around the top of the circle, with Pionk guarding in a defensive position. Spezza attempts to move the puck through traffic to a teammate, but it bounces away and into the high slot. Pionk, still without his stick, gets low to make a play on the puck with his hand. As he does so, Spezza pinches down from the blue line to deliver a check. As he attempts to deliver the hit, Spezza shifts his weight to his right leg and picks his left leg off the ice slightly. With his left knee now in front of him, he leans in to an attempted body check. This hitting motion drives his knee directly into the head of Pionk with force, causing an injury. As outlined by the collective bargaining agreement, it is important to note the prior events which occurred in the game which led to this play. A little over a minute before this incident occurred, Pionk injured Maple Leafs defenseman Rasmus Sandin with a knee-to-knee -knee check, a hit for which Pionk has been suspended. Spezza acknowledges that he was aware that the player he was checking was Pionk. The Maple Leafs and Spezza made three arguments on today's hearing. First, the Maple Leafs argue that this is not kneeing. We disagree, as this is clearly a case in which Spezza's leading knee makes direct and forceful contact with his opponent. We also note that there is past precedent of our department penalizing knees to an opponent's head under the kneeing rule. Second, both the Maple Leafs and Spezza argued that Pionk is eligible to be checked on this play, and we agree. While every play is different, there is no league rule against hitting a player who is low to the ice, provided the hit is delivered in an otherwise legal fashion. However, it is important to note that it is often extremely difficult to deliver a legal check to a player in a vulnerable position, and the onus remains on the player throwing the check to adjust himself to ensure the hit is delivered legally. In addition, the vulnerable position the player is in means there may be an increased danger of significant injury. The player throwing the check assumes both the added difficulty of delivering a legal body check and the increased risks that accompany the hit and, as outlined in the CBA, is responsible for the consequences of his actions. Finally, Spezza argued that he would have been able to deliver this check legally had Pionk not fallen further toward the ice, materially changing the position of his head after Spezza had already committed to the hit. We do not agree. While Pionk does swing his arm and turn his torso while making a play on the puck, his head remains on a consistent plane and track throughout the hit. At no point does Spezza get low enough to the ice to ensure that anything other than his lower body is going to make contact with Pionk. Ultimately, while we believe that Spezza's long history of clean play supports his argument that he does not intentionally drive his knee into the head of Pionk, this is a play in which he is attempting to enact forceful retribution on a player who is in a vulnerable position. The onus is on Spezza to ensure the hit is delivered legally. Instead, during his attempt to execute a difficult and dangerous check, he drives his knee into the head of an opponent in a reckless fashion and causes an injury. <laughs> to summarize, this is kneeing. Pionk suffered an injury on the play. Spezza has been neither fined nor suspended previously in his 1,203-game NHL career. <laughs> the Department of Player Safety has suspended Jason Spezza for six games. Okay, so wh where does that leave us now? There's two things to discuss. One, there's the isolated instance of what just happened. You want to take a look at the video. It's very self-explanatory. You end up targeting a guy's head. 
Knee went to the head. That's what the NHL believes is that the head was targeted. It could have been avoided. It resulted in an injury. Concussions are nothing to play with. We all know what happened to Sidney Crosby. He lost 12 to 24 months of his career. It can be an absolute career ender for other injuries. And head contact is just nothing to play with. So we know this. If you go ahead and look at this video in isolation, no problem with it. You got to be safe. And the NHL clearly calls out here, hey, man. We know you were going after him, and we know it was a gonger of a game, buddy. You shouldn't have been doing that. You, Jason Spets, have the responsibility to take a look at it. We have the responsibility to suspend Pionk and yourself for reckless behavior, and the refs have the responsibility to keep control of the game. Okay, fine. We all set off and we leave. But that's not the way the NHL rolls. The Department of Player Safety basically spins a roulette wheel with zero consistency, or at least as much consistency as an NHL referee, and hands these out. And we've seen two notable examples of it in the last 12 months, ironically both from the Jets and the Leafs now. Spezza gets six games, Mark Scheifele got four for his hit on Jake Evans. One player ends up causing a concussion, the other player is carried out on a stretcher. Both are pl offending players that have no history of violence behind their name in terms of the NHL. They have no previous suspensions. They're not known for playing a physical game. They're known for playing actually a relatively gentleman-like game, and they're well-liked throughout the league and within their peers, but they end up causing this and they get a four game and a six game, which nobody would have a problem with if the NHL said there was a rule change or a reinforcement or something else was happening, but they're not. And the big issue that fans can take with this, 100% in my opinion with this, is the fact that there are tons of other examples out there of guys just being absolute POSs that get nothing in what are just as, if not more, dangerous plays. Let's go take a look. We all remember this one, right? Mr. Tom Wilson, the famous guy himself. Oh, punches him in the back of the neck, a defenseless player, just a nasty little shot there. And then he ends up getting up and wwe body slamming a helmetless Artemi Panarin who's just trying to back up his buddy. Look, Panarin's getting his buddy off of him, and then what does Wilson do? He slides all the way in behind, and he ends up taking out Panarin. I mean, I, I think that play was absolutely just gross, but we all know what happened the next game. The Capitals played the Rangers to the tune of tons of ratings for the NHL. It was a complete gonger in itself. And the NHL reap the benefits. Spets is six games. Wilson zero. And here's a player Toronto's very familiar with. Nazem Kadri coming across the middle. And boom. Elbow to the head. Oh, that is tough to see. Just lays him out. Oh, this man is a repeat offender who has caused multiple problems in the NHL. Is not liked with his peers. Is clearly violent and has a chip on his shoulder. He gets eight games. So what they're saying is Spezza's first time offense after 15 years in the career is 75% as bad as all the ridiculous clown show stuff that this guy does. Here's another Kadri hit Leafs, Leafs fans will be familiar with. Defenseless player. Looks like a worse hit than Jason Spezza. The player's back is to him. He's on the boards and Kadri goes hip to face into it. Again, only eight games for his most recent suspension. This was way less than six games for Kadri. And then here we go. Kadri's at it again. <laughs> Just a goaltender in the face. Oh man, you gotta, I, like, you gotta love hockey. This is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But he gets three games for this one. Then we got this one, Ryan Reeves. Look, the player's down. Looks exactly like Tom Wilson knows exactly what he's doing. Knee to the face, ends up punching him a couple times. And then the player lies motionless on the ice for the next two, three minutes while a scrum ensues in front of the rest of the referees. Way less punishment than Jason Spezza receives. Connor McDavid, defenseless player, no slow up, face to the boards, out, injured. McDavid's first suspension, and he is no clean whistle. We know that because when we take a look at his hit on Jesperi Kaki and Emmy, look at that elbow go up, boom, right to the teeth, targeting the head. That was no suspension. That was $5,000 fine. How about Sidney Crosby this year? No suspension. That's cool. Superstar. No problem. And then here's another great example. Two games for Nikita Kucherov. Defenseless player down. Targets the head. Oh my God. And it goes on and on and on like that. That's the NHL today. So do I think the suspension is just? No. Do I think the NHL Department of Player Safety is out to lunch? Absolutely. Do I think NHL referees should probably change and the whole league has no idea what it's doing? For sure. 
but that's irrelevant. We've talked about it many times before on this channel. The NHL doesn't care what you or I think as fans. The NHL is just going to do whatever the NHL does. And the truth and pragmatic reality of hockey is since these guys were 14 years old in Bantam, then up to Midget, then up to Junior, hockey has been an incredibly violent game and a tough go for these players. They get hit from behind. They get targeted in the head. They get into fights. They slash each other in the back of the ankles. They take out each other's teeth. They wear knives on their skates. Like This has been going on at high-level hockey since before I was born and it hasn't really gone away it's just changed in the way that it's happened so sure we're better than the days of Gordie Howe where guys weren't wearing helmets and there were stick fights but we still haven't completely progressed and if anything it might even be a little more dangerous these days because we know checks to the head and concussions are worse and players are faster the equipment hasn't been able to keep up and frankly the referees just routinely lose control of games because of this idea in hockey culture that we don't call the rules as they're written. We call them as the culture of the game feels like we should dictate it to keep the flow going. And there's nothing wrong with fans on both sides. The fans that say, let the boys play. I love the old time hockey. Go for it. It's a tough game. No problem. That's the way the game is designed today. They're actually in the right because that's the way the game works now. You're in the wrong if you think there's a whole bunch of things that should be happening because it's an interesting should you're allowed to think it should happen, but it's not happening because it's not part of the game, nor is it the future direction of this game. At the end of the day, if the game wanted to play the way the game you know, was progressing, the way we know about medical science and what people like, it would be played much closer to the Olympic style game than to what we have today, but it's not. Um, there's no reason for a player to wear a half visor in today's NHL or to wear the crappy helmets that they wear compared to what NFL players wear. NFL players can wear full visors and concussion proof helmets. Hockey helmets are much lighter. They don't offer the same protection that an NFL helmet does. And the game actually moves faster with a weapon in your hand and they don't wear neck guards or face shields and mouth guards still aren't mandatory. Big part of concussions. So that shows you the difference in culture between them both. Hockey will fight this tooth and nail forever. Fights will be part of it for as long as hockey can hold out. Lack of equipment will be part of it. Poor refereeing will be part of it and poor suspensions and player safety will be part of it. You just got to deal with it as a fan. And if you don't want to deal with it, I'm fortunately the only recourse you likely have is turn off the TV. That will absolutely get the NHL's attention if it happens en masse, but the sad reality is, is the reason they haven't changed hasn't happened enough. They're still growing. The old white dudes that own the team, they're still making lots of money, so they're happy. TV contracts are growing, baby. That is the NHL on the Spench Day. Those are my opinions on it. Leafs Nation, let me know what you think down below in the comments.